if you want to grab your audience's attention, you need a great hook. This is one of the first rules of storytelling. The first page, scene, or sequence of a story is critical to setting up the characters, world, and narrative that we need to become invested in. And few video games do this better than The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. A Link to the Past is unique to look at from a storytelling perspective because it was released back in 1991, when the art of storytelling in games was still in its infancy compared to today. Even the two Zelda games that preceded A Link to the Past just dropped you off into a world and let you run loose, with any story context being contained in the instruction manual. Yeah, remember those beauties? A Link to the Past isn't a particularly story-heavy game, but it has exactly what it needs right when it needs it. A lot of the writing that does exist is in the game's opening act, which is over once the player completes the first pseudo-dungeon. In not much time, Nintendo perfectly sets up a world, a conflict, and then sends the hero on his quest in a compelling manner, letting the player then explore and discover the world at their own pace. As we walk through the opening act of this game, I wanted to break down some of the things this game establishes well. The elements we're going to be looking at is how the game establishes world, establishes conflict, establishes characters, establishes motivation, builds wonder and atmosphere, and then how it sets the player free. Now as soon as you boot up the game, you're greeted with some of the most important elements of the game, though you don't know what they are yet. These glowing triangle thingies, the sword, the castle, a short triumphant jingle plays, and this game is already revving you up for adventure. The screen immediately fades into a short cutscene explaining the history of the land of Hyrule. The artwork looks like an old scroll, as if it's a tale that has been commonly passed down over the years. The importance of that glowing triangle you saw in the logo is explained. It's called the Triforce, and it is a source of ultimate power. People fought and killed each other to get their hands on it, so the king ordered seven wise men to seal the land in which it was placed. We're then visually transported to present day, where we are told a wizard named Aghanim has been tracking down the descendants of these wise men and making them disappear in order to break the seal and gain the power of the Triforce for himself. We see a girl being shoved off screen, along with another girl with a crown still in her cell. We then see the girl who is led away by the guards be placed on an altar and get zapped away by Aghanim, along with a message that the time of destiny for Princess Zelda is drawing near. Before we even press a single button on the controller, we already have most of the premise established. Kingdom, great power sealed away, wizard wants to break the seal, he needs to be stopped, particularly before he gets to Princess Zelda. It's simple, it's effective, we got it. When we start the game, we are taken to a small house, far from the splendor and demise of the castle. It's nighttime. We can hear the sound of pouring rain outside, establishing the gloomy and unsettling mood. A man sits at a table, and a boy sleeps in a bed. We then hear someone beg for help. It doesn't appear to be either of the men in the room. We discover that the person pleading for help is Zelda, somehow speaking telepathically to the boy in his sleep. She says she is being held prisoner in the dungeon of the castle, which we can assume means she is the maiden we saw earlier in the intro. Out of all the maidens, only she remains. She again begs for help. The call to action is immediate. My dog is barking. The boy, Link, is suddenly startled out of his sleep. The room becomes bright. The man to the left of him, who is his uncle, tells him that he is going out for a while and instructs Link not to leave the house. Ominous music begins to build and play. Link's uncle leaves with both a sword and a shield in his hands, but who leaves in the middle of a stormy night fully armed if not for some serious reason? It's obvious that something isn't right. As soon as he is gone, Link jumps out of bed, grabs a lantern, and heads out as well. By the time Link leaves his house, we already know that the danger we were introduced to in the opening cutscene is not just affecting those in the castle, but is also affecting the common folk in Hyrule. However, we as Link are still left in the dark as to what's happening, other than knowing that for some reason, Zelda can telepathically speak to us and is in need of immediate help. We also see through nonverbal storytelling that Link is a character who is quickly moved to action by need. This is all the player needs to know to be motivated to go investigate the castle, seeking not just to save Zelda, but also to find answers. The player is finally released into the stormy world of Hyrule, but is also guided from getting too lost by the guards that are placed all around, blocking certain paths. From what they say, one can assume that their presence is not the norm. The rain continues to pelt down, and the ominous music continues to build. When Link makes it to the front gate of the castle, he is stopped by a guard saying he is not allowed inside and is told to go home and get some sleep. 
both Link and the player don't heed this. Still determined, Link eventually finds a secret entrance into the castle by pulling some weeds around the back, and then falls into an underground room. He falls into a pool of water in a dark corridor, where he immediately sees none other than his uncle, slumped down onto the ground, severely wounded. Link's uncle is upset, stating that he didn't want to get Link involved in this mess, but he knows that he now has no other choice. He gives him his sword and shield, passing down the secret sword technique of their people. He states, Link, you can do it. Save the princess. Zelda is your... Before being rendered unconscious and presumed dead. This adds a second layer of motivation to the game. Link is no longer a child under his uncle's care. Greatness and responsibility has just been thrust onto him by his uncle's request. He must seek to bring justice and right the wrongs. He must take up his uncle's sword and fight. Link's uncle's last words stick in the player's mind. Zelda is your what? You are more determined than ever to brave whatever lies inside the castle. By the time you make it out from underground and walk through the castle's front doors that are surrounded by guards trying to kill you, the music changes yet again. Now it plays a theme that is grand, bombastic, and almost sinister. The sound of the pelting rain can still be heard faintly in the distance. Link, despite being inexperienced and not very strong, bravely fights his way through the castle and makes his way down into the lowest levels of the dungeon. You as the player never feel overpowered. It's a delicate balance between taking someone down and taking damage yourself. It's a battle for life. In the bottom of the dungeon, in front of Princess Zelda's cell, Link comes across an armored guard who begins swinging a ball and chain at him, which takes heavy damage if Link gets hit. Your strategy for fighting has to change, making you think about your entire toolset and forcing you to get creative with taking a more challenging enemy down. Already there is progression in your skills as a gamer and Link as a character. When Link succeeds, he gets the big key, which he uses to free Princess Zelda from her cell. A lovely and calming presence comes over you as Zelda walks close, and her musical theme begins to play as she informs you that she knows a secret pathway to help you both get out of the castle. The castle theme begins to play again. Link now not only needs to protect his own life, but also that of the princess. He fights off remaining foes, and the two of them make their way to the throne room, where Zelda informs Link that the ornamental shelf moves and leads to an underground path to the sanctuary. The two of them use all their strength to push it to the side before going into a pitch-black passageway filled with sewer rats and other creatures. With his uncle's lantern at his side, Link helps the two of them navigate their way through, slaying the creatures that try to attack them. Eventually, they make their way up into the light and open the passageway to the sanctuary. A priest is there who is overjoyed that Zelda is safe. Zelda explains that Aghanim confirmed that his plan was to open the Wise Men's Seal to the Triforce by ridding the land of the Maidens who are descendants of the original Sages. Link is warned that the Wizard will destroy all of Hyrule if he does not destroy him first. But there is also the first hint that something else is at play, as it is mentioned that a mighty and evil force might be guiding the Wizard's actions. The only way to stop such an evil is with the legendary Master Sword, which is the sword we saw all the way back in the opening logo. The priest promises to keep Zelda safe, and Link is told to find the village elder to begin his quest, and is told that the castle guards will certainly be looking out for him now, so he must be on his guard. When he exits the sanctuary, everything is different. There's now sunlight, and the rain is gone. The world is now open and ready to be explored and rescued. The triumphic and adventurous main Zelda overworld theme begins to play. String music has been replaced with brass. Link has proven himself, and he has been given an important task, and now his adventure has finally begun. And with this, the opening act of the game is concluded. In just this short section, we already have everything we need to know to save the world. We care about Link and Zelda, we care about Hyrule, we understand the basic conflict and we are moved to action. We are also looking for answers, we want to know what's going on. What is this evil force helping the wizard? What mysteries lie behind the Triforce and the Master Sword? Will the people of Hyrule be okay? What will become of the Maidens? All these elements work together to propel the player to explore and push on, even when the adventure becomes difficult. And what is so significant about all of this is that only a little bit of this intro is contained through dialogue and what we would consider an early 90s cutscene. But most of it is actually told through elements such as gameplay, music, sound, and environment design. 
the player must pick up on storytelling through subtext and action. As the old saying goes, show, don't tell. This is particularly effective in game design, as it allows players to believe that they stumbled upon something magnificent, even when the game was leading them directly to that point without them knowing. Through a variety of elements, good adventure game design help makes the mission of the game clear, allows the player to get invested, and then lets them roam free. The game also put constraints where it needed to be to get the player comfortable with the general mechanics of the game before opening the world to them. Some modern games get tangled up in establishing its premise because they get stuck in the weeds of too much story and lore dropping at the start, and the game suffers for it. But A Link to the Past rides this delicate balance perfectly, and is one of the most impactful introductions in all of gaming for it, even over 25 years after its initial release. But now, I want to hear from you. What are some of your favorite game introductions, and why do you love it? And if you are interested in becoming part of this channel's family, please feel free to hit subscribe and stay up to date on the latest game analysis videos. This has been The Girl with the Controller, and I hope you have a lovely day.